sell Using stuff right from your shell And with remote control You control the action Stop and go Having fun with my first My first step-by-step -step activity video Welcome to my first activity video this video shows you how to make all kinds of wonderful things out of everyday materials from around the home. There are ideas for presents, decorations, and things to make for yourself. There are eight activities all together, and they're all easy to follow. Before we start, here's a quick guide that will help you use this video. At the beginning of each activity we come to, we will show you all the things you will need to do it yourself. Now make a list of these things and gather them together before you start. Use the pause button on your video cassette recorder to give you time to write everything down. We will show you exactly how to do each activity. As you watch, it may help to write a few notes or just rewind the video and watch it again. It's a good idea to put on an apron or an old shirt to protect your clothes. Now always be very, very careful with sharp knives and scissors. Why not ask a grown-up to help you cut things out? When you have finished a project, remember, put everything away and clean up any mess. Now let's have a look at the first activity. Here's an easy way to make your own puppet clown and puppet robot using large envelopes and all kinds of odds and ends. Once you've made them, you could put on a puppet show for your friends. And these are the things that you will need. Two large brown envelopes, a glue stick, pencil and a pair of scissors, a hole punch and ruler, some colored paper, gold braid and sequins, some wool, two paper clips and four metal washers, two gold curtain rings, three pipe cleaners, two colored sponge balls, eight small buttons, two large buttons, and some aluminum foil. Now this is what you could do. Starting with the clown, take a large tall envelope like this and cut off the flap. Then you need some yellow paper for the clown's shirt. Now draw in a collar shape with a pencil just like this. Then cut it out. glue it to the envelope. Now you need two strips of blue paper for his suspenders. Glue them down. For the nose, ask an adult to cut a red ball in half. Cut a large bow tie out of red paper and glue one side of it. and stick it down, then a knot, followed by a mouth, the nose, paper eyes, eyebrows, a paper hat, ears, blue wool for his hair, which you can attach with paper clips, and buttons for the finishing touches. There, it's all done. And now, for the robot puppet. Start by gluing some aluminum foil around an envelope. Make two holes on each side of the envelope with a hole punch near the top. Glue four washers and stick them over the holes. Now on the other side. Then you take two pipe cleaners and thread them through the holes.
the pipe cleaners to the gold curtain rings like this. Take a third pipe cleaner and tie the two rings together. And there you have it, a robot antenna, ready to pick up radio messages. Cover two small strips of cardboard with aluminum foil for the robot's ears and decorate them with colored sequins. Now for a bit of decoration. And cut out two squares of red paper for the eyes. Now for some buttons. And the nose. Half a green ball. The ears. And mouth. decorated with gold braid. And here are two puppets ready for action. You could put on a puppet show with your friends. There are so many different kinds of puppets you could create. If you're having a party, why not ask everyone to come wearing masks? Everyone could make masks of their favorite animals, like the ones here. Now here are the things you will need. Some thin black cardboard, tracing paper, colored felt, some thin elastic, a pencil and felt tip pen, glue and scissors. Now this is what you have to do. Start by drawing out a design for your mask on tracing paper. Begin with a basic mask shape, about 8 inches across and 4 inches deep, like this. When you're happy with the basic design, take another piece of tracing paper and build the design into a complete face. What about a monkey? There. Now you have to transfer your design into a real felt mask. To do this, the best way is to make template shapes. Take another piece of tracing paper and trace the separate features like this. Here's the snout. Eyebrows, ears, and then cut them out. There, lots of template shapes. Now take the basic mask shape, lay it on the cardboard, and draw around it. Cut it out, then using a felt tip pen, draw around the template again, but this time onto felt, and cut it out. The next thing you need is a piece of elastic. Now make sure it's long enough to go around the back of your head. Now thread the elastic through a big needle. Make a stitch on each side of the cardboard mask. Thread the needle through the cardboard twice. Like this. And tie the end of the elastic in a knot. Then make a stitch at the other side of the card mask and knot the end in the same way. Glue the felt mask to the cardboard mask.
and your basic mask is complete. Now to transform the mask into an animal face. Back to the templates. Lay them on felt. Draw around them and cut the shapes out of the felt. All there is left to do is to glue them together. Some pieces of felt, like the ears, may need to be glued to cardboard, otherwise they'll be too floppy. Eyebrows. Nostrils. Mouth. A monkey. And here's another idea for an animal mask. Why not try to make a mask of your favorite animal? As you can see, they're easy and fun to do. It might surprise you to know that these lovely pieces of jewelry are made from pasta. Here's a project that will show you how to change something you normally eat into something you wear. These are the things you will need. Pasta bows and other pasta shapes with holes through the middle. Colored wooden beads, poster paints, a brush and water, some clear nail polish, colored nail polish, thin shirring elastic, rolled elastic, scissors, fine satin ribbons, and a big needle. There are all kinds of pasta shapes, but not all are large enough for threading elastic through, so make sure the pasta you use has holes. Start by painting the pasta shapes. To avoid getting into a mess, it helps to paint one half at a time and then leave it to dry. When the paint is dry, polish the pasta shapes with clear nail polish. To make a necklace, first measure a piece of thin rolled elastic around your neck. Then cut it to the length you want. Tie a knot in one end. Now you're ready to start threading. Beads. Macaroni. Pasta bows. Into a nice design. Repeat the design until you have threaded the whole necklace. Then tie the two ends together, like this. To finish the necklace off, cut some ribbon into small lengths and tie them around the bows. And here's another design using beads and pasta shapes. There, it's finished. Isn't that pretty? You could wear that to your next party. Another good idea is to paint pasta bows with gold paint. Then thread the pasta onto thin elastic letting them overlap just a little. There you go. One at a time. Tie the ends of the elastic as before. And there you have a really nice looking gold necklace. As well as necklaces, you could make a pasta bracelet. Let's see. A green wooden bead. Some ribbed macaroni painted with nail polish. Another green bead.
and some plain macaroni. There you are, the finished bracelet. So there you have a few ideas for pasta jewelry. Or experiment with ideas of your own. Here's a lovely bunch of flowers. Paper ones. Paper flowers provide colorful decorations all year round. And they are ideal presents. In this project, we'll show you how to make them. These are the things you will need. Some colored crepe paper, some thin wire, some florist's wire, glue, scissors and a pencil, cotton wool, and cotton thread. And this is what you need to do. Let's start by making a rose. Spread some glue over a small piece of pink crepe paper. Now place a piece of cotton over the end of the length of florist wire and wrap the pink paper around it. To make the petals, Cut a long strip of pink crepe paper about 3 inches by 30 inches. Fold it in half, then again three more times. Then mark out the shape of a petal using your pencil. Cut the shape out, making sure you cut through all the layers. And then open it out. There! Lots of petals! Now wind the petals around the top of the wire stem. Tie them to the stem with some cotton thread. There, it's beginning to look like a rose. To make the leaves, draw a leaf shape on folded green crepe paper. A longer leaf shape works best. And now cut them out. Spread glue over one side of a leaf, then lay some thin wire down the middle, and glue a second leaf on top. To attach the leaves, wind their wire ends around the stem. Then, wind a long strip of green paper around the stem. This will help it look more like a real flower. You can add a second bud to the main stem. Glue the end down. Finally, you can bend the leaves into shape. And it's finished! Now let's make a daffodil or Narcissus, which is its other name. Cut out a square of orange paper and fold it in half and snip along one of the edges. Wrap it around a wire stem in the same way you did with the paper rose. Make the petals out of yellow crepe paper. Or you could use white. And wrap the petals around the stem.
When you make the leaves, remember that Narcissus leaves are long and thin. Wrap green paper around the stem. Glue it. And finally, bend the leaves into shape. Now that's a pretty one. Now to make a tulip. Start by cutting four strips of black paper. Twist them. And make them into loops. Now tie the four loops to the stem with thread. Now push two small squares of yellow paper up the stem as far as the loops. Cut five petals from orange or red paper and tie them to the stem with thread. Now the leaves of a tulip are long and wide. Use darker green paper for the tulip leaves. Well there you have three ideas for paper flowers. Once you've made these, arrange them in a nice vase or a glass. These will look lovely around the house. In this next activity, we'll show you three different ways to decorate eggs. They'll make ideal presents for Easter or any time of the year. These are the things you will need. Some eggs, a large sewing needle, a pastry brush, some wallpaper paste, poster paints, a glass of water, a paintbrush, some glue, nail polish, scissors, some yarn, colored tissue paper, and ribbon. Now this is what you need to do. Eggs that are not going to be eaten need to have their contents removed, otherwise they'll go rotten. You may need help from an adult here. Make a hole at each end of the egg with a thumbtack, push pin, or a needle. Make a slightly bigger hole at the rounded end. Now blow hard into the small hole. Let's decorate an egg by covering it with colored tissue paper. Tear the paper into little squares, about an inch across. Now, brush some wallpaper paste over the egg and stick the pieces of tissue paper to the egg. Until it's completely covered. When this is done, leave it to dry. Try covering an egg with two colors of tissue paper. When the eggs are dry, paint them with clear polish. Clear nail polish works very well. Do one half first. Leave it to dry, then polish the other end. How about painting some eggs? The best paint to use is poster paint. Use thick paint straight from the pot to make sure the colors don't run into each other. Try painting one half at a time to save getting into a mess.
both halves are done and dry, you can polish them in the same way as the tissue paper eggs. And now, this is how to make egg people. Start by painting a face on each egg. Mouth, nose, cheeks, and eyebrows. And leave them to dry. Now, to make them some hair. Cut some strands of yarn into equal lengths. Then, lay some ribbon over the yarn like this and tie them together with a shorter piece of yarn. Tie the ribbon in a bow. Trim the hair into shape. Now all you have left to do is glue the hair onto the egg and arrange it neatly. And here are some finished egg people. Why not get out your paints and create some egg friends? It's spooky Halloween. Every year on October 31st, the ancient festival of Halloween takes place. People make jack-o'-lanterns out of pumpkins to scare off evil spirits. In this activity, we will show you how to make your own lanterns. These are the things you will need. A rutabaga, a yellow melon, a green melon, a pumpkin, a chopping board and knife, a spoon and bowl, some string and scissors, and some small candles. Ask a grown-up to cut off the top of your pumpkin. Keep the top as you will need it for the lid of the lantern. Now scoop out the insides of the pumpkin. Be careful not to go right through the skin. Make a little hollow at the bottom of the pumpkin for a candle. Very carefully cut holes for the eyes, nose, and mouth. And there you have a lovely Halloween lantern. You can make lanterns from all kinds of vegetables and fruit. A green melon, for example. Again, do be careful with sharp knives. And now, for some shapes. Lots of moons and stars. 
And here's another melon. Make a handle by cutting two small holes in the sides of the melon. Thread a piece of string through and tie it securely. Put the candle inside. Finally, make a little hole in the top to let out any smoke from the candle. And there you have another finished Halloween lantern. Our next activity is quite different. You might be surprised to know that these brightly colored bowls and plates are made from mashed up paper or paper mache. They're not difficult to make, but they do need to be made in stages, so follow the instructions carefully. Here are the things you will need. Plates and bowls as molds, some petroleum jelly, newspaper, a wooden spoon, knife and scissors, a pastry brush, a bowl of wallpaper paste, a paintbrush, some poster paints, water, clear nail polish or varnish, colored tissue paper, and pages from magazines. And this is what you have to do. Tear some newspaper up into little pieces, first strips, then into squares. Now you need a mold. Choose a plate or a bowl and spread petroleum jelly over it with your fingers. This will prevent the paper from sticking to the plate. Cover the plate with a layer of newspaper. And make sure the pieces of paper overlap so there are no gaps. When you have completely covered the mold, brush some wallpaper paste over the paper. Now add another layer of newspaper. When this is covered, leave it to dry. This could take a few hours. When it's dry, add another layer in the same way and then leave that to dry. Keep doing this until you have six dry layers of paper mache. Then separate the plate and paper mache with a knife. Be very careful with the knife. Now turn the paper plate over and paste one final layer over the back. When this is dry, trim the edge with scissors. Once your paper mache plates and bowls are made, you can decorate them. Paint a pattern using thick poster paint. Start with a nice bright red zigzag. Be careful not to let the colors run into each other.
When the paint is dry, brush a clear coat of polish over the top. Keep your designs bold and simple. Doesn't that look great? Here is a paper mache bowl. Make this in the same way as the plate, but cover the outside of the bowl with the paper mache rather than the inside. Instead of painting the bowl, you could decorate it with a layer of torn up paper from color magazines. And finish it off with a clear coat of polish. Another way to decorate paper mache is to use colored tissue paper. Tear the tissue into squares and then paste them to a paper mache plate. Finally, brush a clear coat of polish over the plate when it's dry. So there are a number of ideas for making and decorating paper mache pottery. Make sure you give it a try, because the results are so beautiful and useful. Wouldn't you agree? We've shown you many things to make, and lots of these you could give away as presents. Even the tiniest present looks special if it's wrapped in handmade paper. So now, we're going to show you how to design and print your very own wrapping paper. These are the things you will need. A chopping board, some leaves, a potato and a knife, a paintbrush, a pencil, some poster paints, a small sponge and saucer, colored tissue paper, some yarn and scissors, a hole puncher, cellophane tape, and some colored ribbons. Start by making a printing block from a potato. Cut the potato in half and draw a design. Christmas tree, and a pot shape for its base on the other half. Cut around the designs so they stand out. Remember, be very careful with sharp knives. There, two print blocks. Now dip the potato blocks in the paint and start printing. Not too much paint now, or it will run.
prints using stencils. A stencil is easy to make and gives a very good result. Just watch. Fold a piece of thin cardboard in two, like this, and draw half a flower and half a leaf. Now cut the stencil out Lay the stencil flat on a piece of paper. Dab a small sponge in paint and sponge it onto the stencil like this. There! A tulip! And you can repeat this stencil design as many times as you want. Here's another idea for making your own wrapping paper by making leaf prints. Make sure the leaf you use is fresh and clean. Paint it with thick paint straight from the pot. Lay the leaf face down on a big piece of paper and rub the back of the leaf with your fingers. There! Having made some wrapping paper, the next thing to do is make some gift tags out of cardboard. Use a hole punch to make a hole. Then decorate the tag with a stencil. Finish it off by tying a piece of yarn through the tag. It might be fun if you signed the card. Now all that's left to do is wrap the presents up. First thing to do is lay the present in the middle of the paper. Then cut it to size. Now fold the paper over, making sure there's plenty of overlap. Fold each end and stick them down with small pieces of cellophane tape. You don't need great long pieces. Now take a long piece of ribbon and wrap it around the present. Like this. Tie a bow. Not all presents are the same shape. 
Here's a good way to wrap a tube-shaped present. Cut the paper so the ends overlap by about 8 inches. Crunch in the paper at the ends to make it look like a firecracker. And tie pieces of ribbon to hold the ends in place. To finish it off, cut some small triangles out of the ends to make zigzag edges. And there you have two completed presents. I bet you know someone who would like these. That brings us to the end of our video. We hope you've enjoyed it and that you will try all these activities for yourself. Ask for an adult's advice about the best place to work. And ask for their help with sharp knives and scissors. Think safe. Why don't you start collecting things for a project right away? Did you ever wonder how fingerprinting's done? How a pizza's made or how a rainy sky paints a rainbow with the sun? Well, we can show you ways to find the answers for yourself Using stuff right from your shell And with remote control You control the action Stop and go Having fun with my first My first step by step Activity videos Discover a whole new world of fun with my first activity video series Among the many titles you will want to explore are My First Cooking Video My First Science Video My First Nature Video And of course, My First Activity Video Also, if you'd like to join the Sony Kids Music and Video Fan Club and receive a free newsletter and catalog, please send us your name, address, age, the name of this tape, and where you bought it. Write to us at Sony Kids Music and Video, P.O. Box 4450, Mail Drop 514, New York, New York, 10101.